Running through a small bit of obstruction, the most recent guidelines. So as a quick background, the partial or complete blockage uh, of the bowel preventing food, fluid and gas to come through the intestine. SPO represents for 12 to 16% of the emergency admission and 20% of the emergency laparotomy. This is just a quick background. So we explained earlier that bowel obstruction can come with the four cardinal signs and symptoms which is abdominal pain, abdominal distension, and obstipation, which is constipation and not pass inflatus, and vomiting as well are the last symptoms. In terms of our assessment, we need to clinically examine the patient from head to toe, basically, and also focus, more importantly, on the abdomen to rule out two things. Presence of um, hernia, uh, because obstructed hernia is a common presentation for bowel obstruction and also presence of peritonism because you will be worried about bowel perforation and uh, quite serious complication. And then after we examine the patient, we need to start resuscitation. Resuscitation is basically drip and suck. Uh, so in terms of drip, we need to start the patient on IV fluids immediately because they will be dehydrated and so we can put an NG tube in and also a urinary catheter in as well. So we can go to tubes, which I mentioned. So NG tube, urinary catheter, and also a cannula. Bilaterally, was taking the bloods and all the other investigations. Investigations for this patient, I would say the gold standard investigation is CT abdomen and pelvis with contrast. And the main reason would do that because Doing a radiograph is like tossing a coin. It's 55, 50, 50% 50 a chance to find an obstruction or not. But CT, AP with contrast is more sensitive. Okay. So early surgery is only indicated if the patient is clinically pyrexic, tachycardic, clinically shocked, basically, or uh, they have significant increase in white blood cells and CRP, or there is an evidence of ischemia, bowel ischemia. Okay, so we talked about imaging. We know that CT scan is the gold standard for um, investigation and uh, not a an x ray. Uh, surgery is indicated if the CT demonstrated a non adhesional cause because the adhesional bowel obstruction is a different type of management according to the most recent guidelines, which I'm going to take you through this now. Surgery is not indicated if the CT demonstrated the clinical scenario results from a functional problem such as alias and also adhesional obstruction, all right? So this is a small bowel obstruction, just in a, like a short manner. We know that it is uh, four cardinal signs and symptoms, do clinical examination, rule out peritonism, rule out hernia, and uh, uh, um, start resuscitating the patient with fluid and analgesia, put a cannula in, take bloods, place an NG tube, place a urinary catheter, and bloods, we talked about them before in different scenarios. It's a UNE, CRP, LFT, and uh, uh, all the basic bloods. ABG is important to look for the lactate in case the patient had um, sort of um, bowel ischemia and complications. Um, after starting the patient in fluid and putting an NG tube in, you can get a CT scan. Uh, CT scan will tell you whether it's adhesional or non-adhesional. It could be cancer. It could be anything else. So after doing the CT scan, you will be able to be guided on the management. Um, so the CT, uh, you, so non-adhesional bowel obstruction, you can treat surgical. And if it is adhesional bowel obstruction, we're going to tell you the management in the next video. And a surgery is not indicated if it's a functional obstruction such as EDS. All right. Thank you. Adhesional bowel obstruction, so it's most commonly small bowel obstruction and happen in patients who had previous surgery. That's why it's quite important when you're presenting a case to your consultant to mention whether this is a virgin abdomen or a non-virgin abdomen, meaning uh, did this patient had any surgical history uh, or any surgery before in their abdomen. Because the surgery itself can lead to adhesions. However, there are some congenital adhesions that the patient just have. And also any kind of surgery, whether it's a laparoscopic or open surgery. Obviously, open surgery is related with higher risk of adhesions, but laparoscopic remains a smaller risk, but it's there as well. So if you found out that a patient, you 
presented with signs of bowel obstruction of Donna CT scan and it says uh, query adhesional bowel obstruction. So the treatment for adhesional bowel obstruction is really based on uh, uh, conservative management first. We're going to start by conservative uh, management and then we can move to surgical management if there is no response to conservative management. Conservative management is to write for 48 hours, giving a gastrographic meal and doing serial abdominal examination and serial x-rays. The patient might respond to that, so gastrographin is diagnostic and therapeutic at the same time. Um, uh, the contrast, if the contrast reaches the colon, that predicts there will be a resolution without any need for surgery. At 72 hours, if the patient is clinically stable with um, confirmed adhesion and bowel obstruction, can be safely managed for conservatively for 72 hours, that's the key number. However, if we reach 120 hours, which is four days, and it hasn't resolved, we couldn't see any contrast coming into the large bowel, um, that means it will not resolve and we need to operate in the patient, or that means it has a higher mortality and morbidity risk, and we can need to operate on this patient. Generally, the indication of surgery, usually for um, suspected bowel ischemia or bowel obstruction, so six hours in, if you have a suspected ischemia or strangulation. We can do it laparoscopically, but obviously this will need an experienced surgeon, otherwise we can do it openly. All right? The current evidence does not support any routine administration of anti-adhesional bowel powder or anything else. The surgery of SPO is associated with higher morbidity and mortality, and um, an anesthetist and a consultant surgeon need to be attending in these kind of surgery. So this will summarize the treatment for a small bowel obstruction. So if you have a patient with a small bowel obstruction that is diagnosed, so we need to think first, is there obstruction for hernia or bowel ischemia? If the answer is yes, that's why the first thing that I mentioned that we need to do is to rule out that the patient doesn't have hernia and the, the abdomen is not peritonetic. If the answer is yes, we're going to do a surgery for this patient directly. If the answer is no, we can do a CT abdomen and pelvis with contrast after doing the drip and suck that we, like we mentioned a little bit early in this video. All right. After doing this, um, the CT contrast can tell us whether it's adhesional or non-adhesional. All right. So if it told us it's, it's ischemia or obstructing lesion or a mass, you can do surgery. And if it's just adhesional, we can try conservative management with gastrographin meal. So the gastrographin meal, uh, uh, then um, we're going to wait for 48 hours. If there is no resolution, we can go for water-soluble contrast study. And then the contrast reaches the colon, it will be treated. And mostly, they will get clinical resolution anyway. And if they had any risk of bowel ischemia, we're going to go back to our treatment, which is surgery. So this is, in summary, the treatment of bowel, a small bowel obstruction. So likewise, I'm going to go through the large bowel obstruction as well. So if this is the large bowel, so the commonest causes for large bowel obstruction, less likely to be adhesion. Adhesion is more likely to be in the um, small bowel and the hernia as well. But quite commonly in large bowel is bowel cancer remains one of the most important differentials for bowel obstruction, for large bowel obstruction. In addition to bowel cancers, there is something called sigmoid volvulus, which we're going to talk about in detail in the next video. And also the diverticular obstruction or diverticular structure as well might be Crohn's disease, but generally the cancer, colorectal cancer, remain the main differential to think about. So background, large bowel obstruction is an emergency and require early identification and treatment. Consider cancer, vulvulus, and diverticulosis uh, as the important differentials, okay? Symptoms, like we explained early, you have abdominal pain, an obest patient, which is constipation and not passinflatus, nausea, vomiting, quite late to have vomiting in large bowel obstruction, but it's still there, and colky lower abdominal pain, and that there will be continuous pain is a sign of bowel ischemia that we need to consider. Again, when you're examining your patient, you might find distension, you might find a mass, you find, find, find a hernia, you might find, you know, peritonitis due to ischemia and so on. The gold standard scan is CT abdomen pelvis with contrast again 
that's the gold standard scan it needs to be done with a maximum 24 hours ideally done when the patient from the front door in a and &E. it um, can confirm large bowel obstruction and guide us about the treatment we can do a water soluble contrast if we couldn't do a ct abdomen pelvis with contrast the treatment like we said early we can start resuscitation and then we can put some tubes in and then we manage causes specific Resuscitation, mainly it's IV fluid, tubes like a catheter, an NG tube, and putting some cannulae and taking bloods. The cause is specific management, so we can have malignant structure or benign structure, like we explained, or vulvulus. Vulvulus is basically was taught by a rigid sigmoidoscope, and uh, also you can use flexible sigmoidoscope or a decompression tube for possible decompression, and we will talk about this. Benign structure uh, usually requires surgery if it's large bowel obstruction. And then going back to the um, malignant structure, that would be without peritonism, we can start. The patient usually don't need uh, emergency surgery, but obviously we need the treatment as well. It depends on the cause. With peritonism, patient need to be taken to theater immediately, put a stent in um, for them, or we can do a defunctioning stoma as well all right so stenting for it's a self expand for large bowel obstruction self-expanding metal stent will pass it by the endoscope and then the stent will go through the tumor and then we can expand it so release the obstruction for now and then plan the elective management for the tumor like we would normally do after putting the patient on an mdt list thank you